Hi everybody, uh, my name is Pamela Marchand and today I will guide you through this journey to La Silla Observatory. Um, together with Felipe Sorita, he will be my producer today. Um, please be welcome to this tour. <coughs> Mm, well, my name is Pamela, as I already told you, and I work at La Silla Observatory since 2017. Um, I really love galaxies, is, but any question you have, you can ask us, and Felipe, we will uh, be reading all of the questions, and we will try to answer in the best way. So, let's say hi to Felipe. Hi, hi. Um, I don't know, Felipe. Are you? Oh, sorry, with I'm, I'm mute. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay. I'm Felipe Felita. I'm producer. I'm I'm to astronomy. Uh, I work in La Silla around of um, 250, 15, and. And um, today I'm the producer uh, for show 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 you the the observatory La Silla La Silla Observatory and all about the astronomy. But the 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 principal guide today is Pamela Marchand. So let's start. Okay. So let's start with what is ISO. Uh, let's wait for the image. But uh, first. ISO, it means the European Southern Observatory, and it's an uh, international organization that comprises 16 member states. All of them are from uh, Europe, as you can see in the, in the image. But, well, for example, we have uh, Finland, Germany, Belgium, Spain. So tell us in the comment sec section, where are, you, uh, where are you from? For example, we have someone that, that says from Amsterdam, and you can see that we have the Netherlands over here uh, being ISO, um, ISO member states. Um, well, and then if you can uh, look to the um, right uh, below part of the picture, you can see Australia there, because Stra Australia is the strategic member is not an European, but is a member of ISO. And also we have Chile, but Chile is not a member state of ISO, but is the host country. That means all of ISO observatories will be built in Chilean territory. <clears throat> but what are those um, observatories? The first we have um, in the northern part of Chile, we have the BLT and BLTI in the Paranal Observatory. The BLD is the currently the is currently the most um, technological uh, telescope right now, and is the host of BST and Vista. And I really like Vista because they work with those data. Um, then, in front of Paranal, we have the Amazonas Mountain. That this is the place that we were we are building the ELT telescope as the future of 30 meters of diameter, the extremely large telescope. Then, if we go to the uh, Andes mountain range, we will get to the Chacnantor Plateau. There, we have ALMA Observatory. That is a, a lot of radio and uh, radio telescopes that look like these antennas. And we have APEX. Uh, these two radio observatories are at a altitude of 5,000 meters above the sea level. Um, then we have La Silla Observatory. That is the place that we were visiting today. And it's the first observatory at La Silla. And I forgot, I always forgot to mention this telescope. We have, we will have also the CTA South or CTA Sur uh, near Paranal. And this will be like ALMA, let's say an array of Cherenkov Telescope, uh, Cherenkov Telescope Array, that's the name. So um, let's go, let's go uh, to the Sea Observatory. So we we will start in the old side of the planet, in exactly in the part of Europe, right? Mm, yes. So, and why we travel to the Sea Observatory? Let me give you an idea of 
what is ISO and what uh, kind of stuff we, we are doing. And first, ISO tried to know um, which kind of science the astronomer wants to do to start building the telescopes, the instrument that we will need. So not only for for astronomy research that um, that we focus, we also uh, build the telescopes. So we need to start uh, new te to start creating new technologies to let all of the astronomers to have beautiful image that the one that we can see. Um, also, um, it's not only for astronomy research. It's also have a lot of um, um, activities with the community to, I, I don't remember the world, but it's to, 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 um, to give all of the science to the people. Provide, um, provide. Provide, right? Um, now, now we are getting to the Andes mountain range and you can see at the top of the mountain a lot of buildings over there. And this is La Silla Observatory, the first observatory of ISO, of ISO at Chile. It was inaugurated in 1962, in six, uh, 63, I'm sorry. Um, so now we have um, a flight over La Silla Observatory and we have, we are seeing a lot of tiny telescope of one meter diameter. But at that time in, I'm sorry, La Silla was inaugurated in 1969. At that time, all of these uh, a meter telescope was um, were the usual kind of kind of telescope. Now we are building telescope of nearly 40 meters of diameter. That's a lot of technology that we have we have between these these years. Um, and now you can see on the picture on the on the video the NTT telescope. This is one of the main targets from today visit, and then you can see says. CES is like the grandfather of ALMA. It's a radio telescope, but we are not using it anymore. You can see the Swiss, the Swiss TAROT. TAROT is a, a gamma ray telescope. Um, the visitor center when you go to the Silla and the ISO 3.6 meter of the, uh, diameter telescope. And this is the first telescope that we are visiting today. So let me change the, the screen. So as I was uh, saying, ISO was uh, founded in 1962, then in 63, they chose Chile as the host country, and then in 69, um, the Sea Observatory was inaugurated. And let's start from here, from um, the CES telescope, as you can see, it's a, it's a radio telescope. And the, the funny uh, thing about this one, is that they can work the 24 hours of the day, but they can focus to the side. Um, so you can see all of this, all of this part that you can see is, this is a, um, a, a, sun, a sunset and all of this is a ocean cloud because we have an effect in the in the in the ocean that maintains all of the all of the clouds to that part to the to the west part and we have the Andes mountain range that maintains all of the clouds in, in to Argentina for example so we have from one year uh, more than 300 clear the uh, clear nights and in this kind of uh, in this picture is so strange because we have clouds. It's not normal to have this kind of clouds over here. So <clears throat> let's start with the 3.6 telescope. After I told uh, some things about the, the this telescope, we will read all of the comments se section for all of your questions. <clears throat> so we are here at the observat uh, at the telescope and as you can see it's so huge and i don't know if you can spot someone over <clears throat> over uh, in the picture i um, see one there in the left yeah let me go closer and you can see some someone over here and this is an operator 
And this is uh, these are the the people that work in the telescope that need to fix everything, try to maintain everything working during the night for the astronomers. And as you can see, it's so tiny below the telescope. Um, this this one it was inaugurated in 19, uh, in 1977. Some important numbers that I want you to remember because we will compare them to the entity telescope. And first is the diameter of the primary mirror. The primary mirror is in this part and has 3.6 meters of diameter. And, and why the name of the telescope has the, the number of the diameter? And it's because the light in astronomy means everything. With the light, we can know the temperature of the object, what the object is. Uh, if it, we are seeing a, a star, a galaxy, a planet, um, uh, some more strange objects, um, so we can know the, the temperature, the, the age, uh, how is, is it moving, uh, what kind of elements is it composed. So, the light means everything, as I already told you, and we need to collect this light with a with a yeah, with a mirror, and with a bigger mirror, mirror we will collect more light, and more light will mean that we will see faint uh, objects in the sky, and this usually means that we will we will um, observe something far far away from us, and more faint it will be at the beginning of the universe. So uh, it's so important to build a um, more um, bigger telescope each time. Um, I have a question of Roland Lemmer. Uh, okay. The question is, uh, does this telescope use laser to improve image quality? This particular 3.6 uh, telescope is too old for the new technologies of for example, the lasers of the uh, adaptative uh, adaptative optics uh, don't have any because the three point six is too older. And um, in general, in La Silla, don't have adaptative optics. It means the the laser, the, the laser. But in Paranal, the BLT have a, have a, in the first principal telescope have a laser to to shoot the sky and see the and improve the, the quality of the image around the calibrations. So this is the only question I have. In, meanwhile, you, uh, I, I invite you to leave uh, questions about the, the astronomy, uh, about astronomy, La Silla, or everything you want about the, the sky or, or, or whatever you see in the, during the tour. So sorry, Pamela, continue. Okay. Um, uh, what was I saying? Um, okay, the mirror. Um, let me tell you how this telescope works. First, we have a dome. This dome over here has a semisphere shape, and this is the part that will open during the night. So the light comes from the from the sky go to the primary mirror, will reflect on the primary mirror, and then go to the secondary mirror that is inside this black cylinder. Let me show you this image. Um, and this is the, the top of the um, top of the telescope. And then the light will reflect on the secondary mirror and go through this part. And the primary mirror has a hole in the, in the middle. So the lights go through that part, get collected, and then we'll we will send it to the next floor, um, floor below us, and that's where the instrument is. And as you can see in the in the picture of the right, uh, we have some black tabs over here, and this is to maintain clean and moisturize it, the the mirror. So when the, the when we start the night of observation, when the tabs will be open and mounted. Uh, and leave the primary mirror totally exposed to the sky. And also, um, 
An important thing in the telescope is the kind of mount. Um, this use an equatorial mount as the old kind of telescope. And why equatorial? Uh, this is to um, contrast the movement of the planet because we have we know that the the planet is inclined in a we have we have an inclination and is moving in the sky. So when we point this uh, dark blue part, always is always pointing to the south celestial pole. The south celestial pole is the projection in the sky of the south pole. So every star, every every object in the sky will be rotating a, around this imaginary point. So that makes it easier uh, at the old time when we didn't we didn't have um, a lot of technology to make all of the observations. But how this giant moves? Let let us show you a video. I share the video, wait me, wait me a second, here. This is the movement of the 3.6. It's too noisy. Yeah, and as you can see, the, um, the dark blue part is static. And, and to follow a, a star, only the light blue part will be inclinating, and that's how we can so observe an, an object. <coughs> then, uh, let me change the, the screen. Um, another important thing about in the telescope, we told you about the dome, the mirrors, the, um, the bones, but not only for um, with mirrors that we a telescope will work that was in the old time but now we need to record everything so we use computers and instruments we have the camera and we have a very special instrument uh, in this telescope that calls harps and works together with NIRPS. Uh, harps it means high accuracy radio velocity planet searcher and it means that this telescope only focus on finding exoplanet what is an exoplanet an exoplanet is a planet that is rotating around another star. We have our solar system that rotates around the sun, but we will we have a lot of stars, and most of those stars will have we will have planets. And um, how we can do that? Oh, you can see the, the, the video over here. <clears throat> we have the star in the middle, in the center, that is um, rotating around the center of mass, and we have some planets that is also rotating to the center uh, center of mass but to make easier to understand the we have this the, the star that has gravity and makes all of the planets rotating around this star but the planets also have a little of interaction with the with the sun i mean with the star so make the this star has a shake and you can see that, that movement so we don't take pictures of the exoplanets. We only get to see the spectra. And the spectra is this rainbow over here. And this is the, the dispersion of light. And all of that lines, it means different elements. So as you can see, when the light go, goes to the red part of the spectra, it means that the, the star is uh, going closer, uh, going far away from us. But when the line is coming, is going to the bluer part, it means that the object is coming closer to us. Um, it's something like the Doppler effect, and we call it red tip and blue shift. And that's how we can see, we can know with this instrument <coughs> if the, this star has at least one planet. And then the astronomers need to go to another telescope to find out how many planets this star has. and <coughs> To actually see to actually see the exoplanets is very difficult, and just with the, the parallel of the bigger telescope, we can see some exoplanets. <clears throat> um, I see some question over here. We have um. Let me see. Um, those. Does it take long to open the dome? 
the dome of 3.6 uh, how take around a couple of minutes, minutes i will say uh, yes, yes uh, three I... four minutes yeah and it's an old telescope uh, so the instrument and the mechanism is old but it's still working fine but it has like two to three minutes uh to open all of the the dome up because it opens can you put me on on, on screen Felipe, please yes let me hear okay so the dome opens like this and first we will move this uh, dog we will we have a lot of dog that, dogs that we, we will say five or four i don't remember but the first will be moving then the second one and then the third and the fourth dog so that's how the telescope opens and that's why it lasts a couple of minutes <coughs> um And let me go uh, go back to the to the telescope because I told you the um, <coughs> uh, the diameter of the primary mirror. But how much do you think the, um, that weighs? Um, it may uh, this telescope, this primary mirror, is made of um, ceramic and has a weight of eleven tons that is like um two big elephants and the thickness of the primary mirror is about 53 centimeters and these are important numbers because we we um we will compare it with the entity and also uh i saw a question that uh, i will put it in the screen that is from happy martian research that says i see some flat squares on dome and yeah i think that you are referring to this what no nothing in the, the same part i think you are referring to this uh, white square or flat square uh, at the dome and this is to make some calibration uh, to the pictures that we got it flat and we need to mount, we need to focus the telescope into a um, homogeneous uh, flat homogeneous part to see how all of the ccd how the the camera is working <coughs> uh we are not using these uh, squares anymore um most of the astronomers prefer to to have sky flats and sky flats uh, are taken at the sunset and the sunrise before <clears throat> at the sunset before the stars start uh, the stars uh, start appearing <laughs> um you need to focus to the to the anomalous part of the sky and in the in the sunrise it's the opposite opposite thing you try to um, uh, take a picture when the star um, start disappearing and before the the the, uh, the sun is too is too bright <clears throat> so i don't know if we have any any other question uh, we have uh, the last question about the 3.6 in about the can it be operate remotely for harps radical velocity museum for the museum of the radial velocity uh, operate harps uh, operate the harps in remotely uh, uh, it can can't be possible because the the old uh, the old technology of the the old infrastructure of the 3.6 uh, don't live to connect remotely the far far remotely have it in 3.6 is about the control room right Pame? this is the um, if, if can i mean control remotely yeah and um, all of the most of the telescope at la silla are operated remote remotely most of the tiny telescope of a meter of diameter 
um, they are operated from Europe, so the astronomer doesn't need to go to the to the telescope uh, to, to 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 the observatory, and only some of the operators. Um, but um, in this in this observatory, the biggest one, the three point six, the entity, and the two point two that is part of the Max Planck Institute, um, they are operated in another in another building that will be something remotely but the astronomer and the operator need to uh, to be at la silla observatory so, so this is not the uh, exactly remotely used for herbs so uh, you, you need to come to la silla for use this um, I want to show some uh, a comment, please. Um, and it's this one of Federico Noguer that says, I love harps. <laughs> and I really like this because, because harps is a very famous instrument. A lot of um, astronomers want to use harps and because it's so accuracy that, as the name it says itself. Um, and this is a famous exoplanet searcher. So it's very, this is our um main star at la silla yes so, so the next star of la silla is is the other in the new technologies Rah. yeah yeah so we are going back to the to the to the mountain and start in the entity as you can see the name of entity it says new technology telescope it was inaugurated in 1985 so nearly 10 years of difference difference with the other. Um, so when we go to the inside the telescope, you can see first the 3.6, the, that's the telescope that we were visiting before. Um, first, as you can see, the shape of the dome inside is so different. Um, and this is one of the first new technology. It's the kind of the, mo the, the dome. It's not a cylinder with a, a semisphere at the top. It's, it, this telescope it used an um, octagonal shape. Um, also, you can see this part is totally open. And you can see some uh, tabs. Uh, this is a piece of windows over here to maintain open the telescope so when we want to start the night of, uh, of observation first we need to make calibrations and the first one uh, we open this part to to um, maintain the same temperature inside and outside the telescope and to make um to have a good uh, air movement air flow flows um, other thing, as you can see, is that all of the roof is open to the sky. And the kind of mode, this doesn't use an equatorial mode. It, it, we know it as an azimuthal mode. That means that the telescope, this white part, the, what we call it the telescope's body, will be inclinating in 19 degrees. And in this, in this case, is that the entire building is the one that, that rotates in 360 degrees. And this is the azimuth movement. So if you come, if you take a closer look over here, you will see a circular shape. And this is the, the limit between the building and the mountain. So when the telescope moves, it's a, it's a very smooth movement doesn't make any sound it's so fast and it will be moving like this uh, and this is how we can observe some uh, the same object during the night uh, but we need to have better technologies or better computers to 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 have all of this movement movement working together another new technology that we applied here it calls active optics, and we will see the first the parameter mirror. As you can see, only this is the parameter mirror, and has a diameter of 
is nearly two centimeters smaller than the other one, the tripping mirror telescope. Uh, but the thickness of the primary mirror is only uh, 26 centimeters. It's just like a half of the thickness of the other one. But it's made of cerodul. It's another material that makes the weight of the primary mirror only six tons, just one elephant. So make it make a, a very flexible mirror. So when we inclinate the telescope, the mirror will, the gravity will be working different on each part of the telescope. So will be, um, will change the shape. So we have a lot of um, actuators below the primary mirror that will be on uh, in this part that we will go up and down to maintain the shape of the mirror and to have better quality of, emission, of images. Um, so it works like the same, but let me go to the other part of the telescope. And we, we have the light that comes from the sky goes to the secondary mirror and you can see the reflection of the of the mirror over here reflects on the primary primary mirror goes to the secondary mirror will reflect on that that is also in the this black cylinder and the light will come from here and we have a third mirror inside this part and the mirror is will be inclinating 45 degrees to send all of the information to the to this room that is um passing through this door and to the other room that is over here and in each room we have a different uh, different cameras different instruments one to observe in to take pictures in the optical part of the wavelength and the other room will take pictures in the infrared part of the wavelength and only one instrument can be used during the night and the astronomer is the one that decides what, uh, which instrument they want to use. And also, you, as you can see, not only the, the entire roof is the one that opens, it's also this, um, this part over here. Um, so let me let us show you a video of the control room before because uh, you, you can see any astronomy here, but the astronomy uh, stay in the control room. This is the part. Yeah, and this is a um, um, time lapse of a night of observation. And as you can see, we have two uh, two parts in the control room. The first one that is in the right are are all of the computers that works with the um, 3P6 telescope. And in the left bar are the computers of the entity telescope. And you can see the entity that is a new world telescope has more computers. Um, the astronomer in the case of the entity is easier to find the astronomer because they are not using uniform of, of La Silla. So they have colored charts. And the operator is the one that um, is sit in the more, uh, most left part, and um, we have some computers to control the the actuators, the mount, the to open and close the telescope because the operator is the one that decides if the telescope can be observed can observe uh, this night or not. It depends on the uh, the weather conditions or if there is something. Uh, wrong with the telescope um also also in this kind of in these telescopes the astronomer needs to come to la silla um but to to do that they need to make a proposal to international committee the, the, the proposal it says uh with which object they want to to observe um why they want to observe, which, what kind of, res of research they want to do, what are the, uh, the best conditions to observe the, the, and at which, uh, at which uh, time of the year, because not, the sky is not the same during, the, during summer and during the, the winter. And the International Committee will read a lot of, uh, all of the proposals and decide if you will, you will win a night of the observation or not. 
it will be three nights or it will be only um, a ha half of the night. It depends also if the object that you want to observe. Um, only the 20% of the, the night of observation, I mean, only the 20% of a proposals with a night of observation at the ski observatory. And how um, how we can, uh, we have a, a deal with ESO that for the Chilean astronomers, the 10% of the, of the night of one year are only for Chilean astronomers. That means astronomers that are working with a Chilean, Chilean or, an organization or Chilean uh, university, it depends. So that means like one entire month will be only for Chilean astronomer and the other 11 months of the year will be for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of time. Yes, it's a lot of time. Um, I have a video about the principal research of the La Silla or Amparanal. I have the top 10 in English about the 10 principal discoveries for La ISO. Let me show them this video and we'll be back soon. Yeah, uh, leave us the comment section, which is your favorite. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. let's Observations with ESO telescopes have led to many breakthroughs in astronomy and, over the years, have been responsible for some truly remarkable findings. Here is our list of ESO's top 10 astronomical discoveries so far. Astronomers using ESO's very large telescope have discovered by far the brightest galaxy yet found in the early universe and found strong evidence that examples of the first generation of stars lurk within it, stars that were previously only theoretical. These massive, brilliant objects were the creators of the first heavy elements in history, elements that are necessary to forge the stars we see around us today, the planets that orbit them, and life as we know it. ESO telescopes have provided definitive proof that long gamma-ray bursts are linked with the climatic explosions of massive stars, therefore solving an enduring mystery. A telescope at La Silla was also able to observe the visible light from a short gamma-ray burst for the first time, showing that this family of objects most likely originates from colliding neutron stars. Astronomers using ESO's HARPS instrument in 2010 discovered a planetary system containing at least five planets orbiting the Sun-like star HD 10180. They also found evidence that two other planets may be present, one of which, if confirmed, would be among the lowest mass exoplanets ever found. Newer observations and reanalysis of the data suggest that there could be even more planets around this star. ESO's very large telescope was used to detect carbon monoxide molecules in a remote galaxy seen as it was 11 billion years ago, a feat that had remained elusive for 25 years. This allowed astronomers to obtain the most precise measurement of the cosmic temperature at such a remote epoch, and it matched the temperature predicted by the Big Bang Theory. The atmosphere around a super-Earth exoplanet was analyzed for the first time using the VLT. The planet, which is known as GJ1214b, was studied as it passed in front of its parent star, and some of the starlight filtered through the planet's atmosphere. The atmosphere was found to be either mostly water in the form of steam, or dominated by thick clouds or haze. Using ESO's VLT, astronomers measured the age of the oldest star known in the Milky Way. At 13.2 billion years old, the star was born in the earliest era of star formation in the universe. 
Uranium was also detected in a Milky Way star and used as an independent estimate of the age of the galaxy. The VLT obtained the first ever image of a planet outside our solar system. The planet, which has a mass about five times that of Jupiter, orbits a failed star, a brown dwarf, at a distance of 55 times the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. In 2014, ALMA, the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, revealed remarkable details of a solar system that is forming. The images of HL Tauri were the sharpest ever made at sub-millimeter wavelengths. They show how forming planets are vacuuming up dust and gas in a protoplanetary disk. One of ESO's proudest moments came when two independent research teams, including ESO staff, arrived at a truly revolutionary finding that the cosmos is not only expanding, but that it is doing so at an increasing rate. The findings of the separate teams were based on observations of exploding stars, or supernovae, including measurements made from ESO's telescopes at La Silla and Paranal. This discovery was rewarded with the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics. And finally, several of ESO's flagship telescopes were used in a 20-year study to obtain the most detailed view ever of the surroundings of the monster lurking at the heart of our galaxy, a supermassive black hole. Astronomy is always moving forwards, and ESO's top 10 scientific discoveries are not set in stone. This is the um, top 10 of the ESO discovers, but the research in the science of astronomy continually discover new things. For example, the groundbreaking survey revealed secrets of planet Beer around dozens of stars. In a series of studies, a team of astronomers that shed new light on the fascinating co and complex process of the planet's formations. Look at this. The stunning image captured using the ESO Very Large Telescope, or ESO BLT in Chile, represents one of the largest ever surveys in the planet's forming disk. Iman Im imagine a, a new discovery around, around the lots of lots of planets. The researchers bring together observation of more than 18 young stars that may have a planet forming around them. Providing astronomers with a wheel of data and unique insight. This, this new of the, of the astronomy, you have a different news, old news, about the discovery of this. So you can see the, the pictures the, uh, uh, about the, the recent events of ESO in Chile in the world. All about the all about the, the the observatories of Alma, BLT, LT, La Silla, and you can visit us in the La Silla Observatory. Go to the visit is this hotel and we can visit to La Silla. You can find every day of the year you can visit the the telescope. But in this moment we have a, a special. A special, a special moment uh, different of the the, the the present tours is the night view of the La Silla. Yes, so let's go outside that is telescope. Um, it's getting light, so we have a really nice view at La Silla Observatory, and um, that's um, this is why all of the observatories are build so far away from the cities because we have a lot of light pollution as you can see some um, yellow halos are here and this only from this is only from the roll um okay so let's start knowing what are we watching in the sky because most of the people i think they are watching us from the northern hemisphere so the light the the sky is very very dif uh, different 
of the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere. And first, let's start with the Orion constellation. Orion, this is the, uh, the giant hunter in the Greek mythology. And we have here the Orion's belt. And in Chile and most of the Latin America, uh, we know it as Latin America, we know it as Las Tres Marías, uh, the Orion's belt. And this is the um, Orion's nebula. And we have an Orion's nebula also over here. And then we have some the the stars. This is Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse was very famous back in uh, 2019 because the light of the Betelgeuse was very dim, and all of the community saw that it, it will start. It will become a supernova soon. That will happen soon, but it can be now, and it can be. More, uh, more of a uh, hundred years in the future. Uh, so we have Betelgeuse and we have Bellatrix over here. This is the, it's supposed to be the left shoulder of Orion and we have the right shoulder of Orion. But this is B B uh, Bellatrix and I really like this because I really like the, the name of Bellatrix and this is the name of, uh, of my cat. Not only for Harry Potter, but it's another kind of stuff. <laughs> Uh, Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, then we have Regal, the um, brightest star of Orion's constellation, and we have Saif. Saif is the dimmest star in the Orion's, and Betelgeuse is a red giant star. <coughs> but Orion is not alone in the sky. Orion's <coughs> hunt together with its can. And we have here the Canis Majoris constellation with Sirius. Sirius is one is is one of the brightest stars in the sky. <clears throat> we have the the tail of the Canis Majoris, the back feet of the dog, the the body, the front feet. Uh, no, it will be like this. The front feet will be over here because the can Canis Majoris is where the neck of the dog is. So it will be like this shape um, in this case i really get confused with the canis majoris in this part because we have a lot of stars <clears throat> i can find it when i go camping for example here at la silla we have a lot of, of dark places so you can go camping and see the sky in the in its beautiful in a very very beautiful way um, also we have a lot of a lot of constellations we have, you can see also over here, Scorpio with Antares. And you can see a lot of constellations. But another important thing, because we don't have much time left, um, are the galaxies. I already told you that I really like galaxies and I work finding more uh, new galaxies. But this one over here, our, our neighbor that the small Magellanic cloud and the large Magellanic cloud. They are rotating around the, the Milky Way. Milky Way is the name of our own galaxy. And they call Magellanic clouds because at the time of the um, circumnav circumnavigation of Hernando de Magallanes, um, he saw some strange objects during the, uh, during the night that resemble, resembles some some clothes. They call it a small cloth and large cloth. At that time, they didn't know what a galaxy was. It was uh, nearly um, uh, a thousand six uh, hundred year. Um, but now we know what a galaxy is. And a galaxy is, um, is a lot of stars together and you can see the shape I, they are really nice you can see these are irregular galaxies the small one and the large magellanic globe and it has some shape of this canonar and over here is a very famous nebula and it, this is the tarantula nebula and over here shall be a very famous 
a region that calls uh, 30 dorados and it's a region that are forming some big star a lot of star a hundred times bigger than our own sun um, and then we have the milky way the milky way is this part over here that the name of the milky way go back to the ancient greek greek and then in the mythology they call it milky way or via lactea that is a road of stars and they thought that it was the 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 milk of of era i don't remember the names of the gods in english uh, but it was the la the milk of era when when she was um uh, feeding hercules but hercules um, have a problem with, with era so all of the milk is uh, gets sparse in the sky but not only for greek uh, of greek mythology the the sky is made um here in the mountain range of the andes mountain range we have the altiplanic people and the altiplanic civilizations see the sky very different watch this observe the sky very difficult not with dots and lines with the stars but with the different colors in the sky and let's go to the alpha centauri star it is one of over here the alpha centauri is not only one star but we have three stars alpha beta and proxima centauri and proxima centauri is the closest star to the to the earth uh, aside from the sun so we have alpha centauri over here and you can see a shape in the uh, with the colors of the galaxy these dark clouds resemble a llama. The llama is a is the typical animal that you can see in the observatory in um, in the Andes and all of the northern part of Chile, Peru, Bolivia. We have um, so we have the head of the llama that like will will be the ear, the the neck, the body of the llama, the tail, the back feet, and the front feet. feet. And then of the the llama we have a tiny llama, and we have the the ba this baby with the hair, the, the ear, the neck, the body, and the front feet, feet and the back feet, and it's like jumping alongside its mom. And also we have a serpent. Uh, we have a lot of animals, but the most easy one of fi to find are the llamas and a serpent. And you can see over here some red part dark dark part and you can see as you know see no so so that shape uh, we have a, we have this snake over here and another important thing in the sky that to mention is the south celestial pole as i already mentioned you that the south celestial pole is where all of the star moves in the sky all of the objects in the sky moves around this point because the planet is rotating. But how we can find the South Celestial Pole? Here we have the Southern Croix. Uh, we, we call it Southern Croix because it's always pointing to the south. So we have this dark, um, dark cloud over here and one, two, three, four stars of the Croix. And let's extend this axis the major axis three and a half times one two three and a half and over here should be the south celestial pole and as you can see it's also it also uh, makes a triangle with the small and the large magellanic clock and this will this is the place where the south celestial pole will be um Let's go to the 3.6. And I told you some uh, of some yellow halos over here is the light pollution from La Serena. And we can see the light pollution from Balenar, Balenar, Copiapoda, or also near um, cities of Chile uh, near La Silla. And over here, you can see some shape, uh, some, shape some halo that comes from the from Argentina and this is 
like pollution from Argentina, from San Juan, even. So let's go to the road because this is the end of the tour. I hope all of your questions, you, you will put all of the or, uh, all of your questions on the, in the comment section. I hope you really enjoy the tour and to remember that we um, we have some visitors at la, at the sea observatory every saturday in the morning and during the afternoon you can visit us and visit, uh, go inside the telescope and to make um, a really nice tour so thanks for watching us i hope you to see you next time and and this is the hotel where all of the astronomers and the operators stay during the during the, uh, the night during the day and let's finish the tour with a beauty, this beautiful view of the Milky Way. Uh, need to see you next uh, weekend in parallel so goodbye everyone and thanks for the questions and leave the greetings so bye bye Pame and leave now. Bye, everyone.